topic is choose your aviation career with Aviation Australia. To talk on this, we have four panelists today. Uh, I will introduce them to you shortly. First, I will briefly explain how we are going to proceed. After my remarks, the panelists from Aviation Australia will make presentations and talk about the institute as well as the programs. After that, there will be a short presentation by Study Australia. Then we will have a segment towards the end for the panelists to answer any of your questions. So if you have questions, please text to them. Text them to us through chat. We have put them, put the participants' mics on mute. We have to finish the, the, this webinar latest by 2.15 p.m. All this time. For those of you just joining us through Zoom, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, welcome to our session. As I mentioned, uh, today's topic is uh, choose your aviation career with Aviation Australia. Uh, we have uh, four panelists. Uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Rohini Dizoza, uh, Mr. David Chol, both of them are from Aviation Australia. And we have Mr. Ahmed Nafis, who is an alumni of Aviation Australia. Uh, currently works at TMA. And uh, we have uh, Ms. Anna Hida from Study Australia. Uh, Aviation Australia is uh, located in uh, Brisbane, Australia. Uh, it was established in 2011 by the Queensland government to support the development and growth of aviation and aerospace industries, both in Australian and international markets. It's a world-class training institute offering courses in engineering, cabin crew, and pilot training to aspiring individuals looking to pursue a career in the aviation industry. For those already leading a career in the industry, Aviation Australia also offers courses to upskill or gain professional development. As a result, Aviation Australia is a partner to over 60 airlines and aerospace companies, governments, defense forces, and regulatory authorities with over 1,000 graduates working worldwide. Study Australia is the Maldivian branch of the Australian Education Agency, Edu Training Australia. It offers various services, including career guidance, and also assists in uh, choosing institutes, universities, and programs, helps the students with uh, application management and processing visa and supporting their other needs. If you look at the opportunities uh, that the aviation industry uh, offers to uh, to, uh, to those who seek who seek uh, prospective careers, uh, aviation is a major global industry. It's a key driver of domestic and global economic development. It supports travel and tourism, trade and business, transport and logistics, and so on. The aviation sector has 10.2 million direct jobs worldwide at airports, for airlines, and in civil aerospace and navigation services. Overall, it supports around 66 million jobs, which includes related economic activities such as tourism and trade. The air transport sector is expected to grow at 4.3% per annum in the next two decades. If this growth is achieved, the air transport sector will have 
16.5 million direct jobs by 2036. So, uh, if you look at the aviation industry from a career pers perspective, uh, there are excellent opportunities uh, both in the domestic market as well as uh, the international market. Now I hand over to Rohini, David, and Ahmed uh, to make your presentations and to tell us about the institute, uh, the programs, and about uh, life in Brisbane and other aspects. Thank you, Arif. I will share a short video with you first before I begin my presentation. So hello and welcome everyone. Thank you very much for taking the time to attend this webinar. We here at Aviation Australia are very excited to have you participate as this is your first step to an exciting journey in aircraft maintenance engineering. So congratulations on taking this important step. Aviation Australia has campuses all over Australia and also in Saudi Arabia. Our main campus is located in Brisbane, Australia. And you can see from these images just how beautiful Brisbane is. It's a clean, safe and environment and perfect for studying and living. The campus is also located at the Brisbane Airport. This is the precinct that includes both the international and the domestic terminals. And many aviation businesses also are located in this precinct. So, as Arif mentioned, Aviation Australia was established by the Queensland State Government in 2001. We are a CRICOS registered organisation, and that means that we are approved by the Australian Federal Government to deliver training to international students. Aviation Australia is a leading aviation education institute. We have centres um, in both Brisbane and in Cairns um, that accept international students. Uh, and both of these campuses deliver the diploma of aircraft maintenance engineering. So at Aviation Australia, we deliver a wide um, range of courses from remote pilot to cabin crew and aircraft maintenance engineering. As you can see, we also have a number of certifications. These certifications are from airworthiness um, authorities, such as the Australian Civil Aviation Safety Authority and the European Aviation Safety Agency. We also have um, approvals from the Gulf Safety Authority and also the UAE and Saudi. So what do you need to be able to enrol and complete this course? You need to be 17 years old at a minimum. You should have your high school certificate 
and have a pass in mathematics. You should also have an IELTS academic score of around 5.5 or something equivalent to IELTS. And as I understand, you'll be able to complete your IELTS exam in the Maldives and Edu Training Australia will be able to help you enrol in any IELTS programs as well. So what do you get when you complete the program? You get the Australian Diploma of Aircraft Maintenance Engineering. And as you are aware, the Australian qualification is world recognised. We also deliver the EASA Certificate of Recognition. And this means that you get the approved course. So when you go to apply for uh, positions as an aircraft maintenance engineer, you will be able to show that you have had some practical experience already having studied this course and you will only need another two years of experience in the job before you can become licensed. And if you sit another exam, you can also complete the um, Saudi and UAE Certificate of Recognition, the GCAA. So the cost of the course is $52,500, and 52, sorry, 52,500 Australian dollars. You can pay for the course over instalments, generally every three months. Uh, they are the instalments of around 7,750 Australian dollars. So the things included in this price is also your course, the textbooks, your uniforms, safety equipment, and the exams. So I'll hand over now to our leading instructor, David Toll, who will talk to you about the subjects. And um, I'll be here at the end for any questions that you might have. Congratulations on taking this first step, and we hope to see you soon at Aviation Australia. Thank you, Rohini. Uh, cool. Welcome everyone to the uh, webinar today. Uh, so as an instructor at Aviation Australia, uh, I sort of have three things that I would like to cover off on today. Uh, so in the, the slide in the background there, I'll give a brief description of each subject that we uh, cover. Second one will be how the training is delivered and how it's uh, laid out so that you get the, the best training possible. And the third, third part that I'd like to cover is just the, the benefits or, or why you should choose Aviation Australia uh, to start your career in the aviation industry. So point one. Uh, so to start off with, mathematics. Uh, not particularly uh, in depth, it's generally a how maths is applied in the aviation environment. Uh, the second one that we would move on to would be module two or physics. Uh, a lot of the physics is the, uh, the fundamental building blocks of where we will expand with our, our theory of things like aerodynamics or how these uh, aircraft fly. Uh, our third module that we'll look at is electrical fundamentals. So electrical fundamentals will be everything from uh, voltage, current, uh, resistance and all those other terms that you might have heard uh, around electrical. Uh, we'll look at those and, and build an understanding of how they, or sorry, of what they are and how they apply uh, with respect to maintaining aircraft and, and keeping them in the air safely. Uh, module four is our electronics. Uh, so in, in 2020 and beyond, there's a a number of electronic components in our aircraft, essentially making the aircraft easier to fly, uh, or the, the word that we would refer to that is reducing pilot workload, uh, which again is a, an advanced way uh, of improving uh, passenger safety. From there, the, the next step from electronics, which uh, I would suggest is perhaps the analog side, uh, would be to step into module five or our, our digital systems. 
Uh, so digital system is where we teach you all about all the, what we would call a glass cockpit or the, the modern era of airliners, the instrumentation that the pilots are viewing uh, and how a maintainer needs to interact with those to again, keep those aircraft in the air uh, safely within a set of guidelines. After that, uh, we'll move on to module six, which is our materials and hardware. Uh, once upon a time, aircraft were primarily built of aluminium. Uh, as we move forward, we're starting to move into more advanced composite materials like carbon fiber uh, and Kevlar, and, and who knows in the future, uh, potentially even carbon nanotubes and a, and a bunch of exciting technology down there. Uh, from module six, where we learn about what aircraft are made of, we would then go into maintenance practices. Maintenance practices is how do we tighten up a bolt the same way every time to make sure that it's safe? How do you look at a bolt and make sure that it is safe? Okay. Uh, lock wiring, split pinning. So things that we do that perhaps a car wouldn't need or a, another vehicle, aircraft flying around have vibrations and, and corrosion, how we would handle that uh, to maintain a safe aircraft. From there, we get into uh, module eight, which are our basic aerodynamics. So how aircraft fly. Uh, module nine is, is human factors. Uh, human factors is how the human or, or how we as people interact with our uh, aircraft. And in fact, the environment around those aircraft, once again, to make sure that we're doing that in a safe manner. Number 10 is aviation legislation. That is the, the rules around when we're fixing aircraft. How do we do it? Why do we do it this way? That's the, I guess, the legal side, making sure that we're operating uh, in the right manner. From there, uh, oh, skip the slide there, sorry. Uh, we would then go into module 11. Uh, in the mechanical stream, uh, which is, uh, I guess, our, our predominant stream where most people uh, start their careers, uh, is module 11 is aircraft systems. So uh, landing gear, pneumatics, so air systems, uh, hydraulics, uh, cabin systems like in-flight entertainment and all that, those sort of systems. That's where we learn about those. The next one would be module 12. Uh, so module 12 isn't a standard uh, included. It's an optional extra where we can teach you all about the same types of systems, but how they apply to rotary wing aircraft or helicopters. From there, we go into my, my personal favorite, which is uh, module 13, uh, which is all about how radios work, how the aircraft electrical systems work from generators to navigation, uh, all the, I guess, the, the really high tech um, leading end of technology applied to our aircraft. That's predominantly a avionics or a what we would call a B2 license, uh, which is one of your options if you wanted to do that. Uh, from there, module 14. Uh, module 14 is a uh, engine or a reduced engine component specifically for avionics technicians uh, or that, that B2 license. Uh, 15 is our mechanical stream. And that is everything you would ever want to know about how a jet engine works. So the systems around it, how do we start them? How do we control their, their performance while they're flying? Uh, all those, those really interesting details about jet engines. Uh, in the Maldives, uh, there's a number of uh, twin otters is probably one of the predominant aircraft. Uh, so one of the things that we would do there is, is module 17. Uh, so 17 is all about propellers. Uh, so the, they hang on the front end of our jet engines and, and how we use them, why we use them, uh, how to maintain those systems uh, and all those sort of intricacies. From there, the next three that you would see are just some uh, outcomes that we need to achieve our diploma outcome. So aviation technical English, so that you can 
uh, read and write to the appropriate standard uh, in aircraft maintenance documentation. Uh, effective leadership is essentially it's, it's teamwork and, and leading a team uh, in that aviation maintenance environment. Uh, and last but not least uh, is the environmentally sustainable work practices. You know, it's, it's a formal uh, covering of, we don't just dump our oil in the ocean, we have beautiful oceans and we want to keep them that way. Uh, so we would dispose of our oils or our, our waste products in the most environmentally sustainable way uh, possible. So that, that's uh, the, the main first part, which I guess is the, the bulk of what we would need to study with Aviation Australia. Uh, so the second part of my presentation is how we deliver these things. Uh, so the instruction or the, the course is 18 months long. From there, about 12 months of that is a theory component. Uh, then the remaining six months is going to be purely practical. Within that first 12 months, uh, it's predominantly uh, classroom-based uh, theory learning. Uh, but at the end of each section, so those modules that I mentioned a moment ago, when we get to the end of module 11, we will go and spend two, uh, two weeks out on the aircraft and physically remove uh, landing gear, physically install brakes, uh, so that before you go and do your theory exam, you've had some practical hands-on training to help you really understand how these systems work. After that 12 month period, when we've made it through all of those applicable modules or our, our theory, uh, we'll head out to the hangar for about six months and that's broken down into to two parts, which is our maintenance practices training and our practical consolidation training. And that's basically working on the aircraft for six months uh, while being assessed to make sure that you're at the appropriate standard. Uh, some of the, the things that we need to cover off on there um, is for you to get that certificate of recognition, uh, which is the, uh, the letter from Aviation Australia that says you've completed the 2400 hour course, you need to achieve 90% uh, attendance. Uh, and I guess attendance generally attributes very closely with your results. The more time you spend at school, the better your results generally are. Um, we accept and, and we know that everyone's not going to achieve a, a perfect pass mark every time. Uh, so if that does happen, what we offer is two days a week, we will have remedial training uh, where you can come and sit with an instructor um, to make sure that you pass those exams, uh, as well as uh, we have the opportunity to, to just engage with an instructor and, and say, look, can you uh, give me an hour of remedial tomorrow afternoon? And nine times out of 10, the instructors are going to be willing to do that. Uh, so from there, my final, final point uh, would be the benefits of uh, Aviation Australia. So, so in, in talking to uh, Ahmed uh, the other day, what we were talking about was that the aircraft that we have here at Aviation Australia uh, being the uh, Beechcraft King Airs or the, the C90s, they operate the same engine that's in the twin otter aircraft that uh, are being operated uh, in the Maldives at the moment. So the aircraft we have are extremely relevant and the um, Maldivian Civil Aviation Authority or MCAA uh, will allow you to use that experience. Okay, so, so that goes towards cutting down the time that you have to spend uh, working after you leave here before getting your license. Uh, the other thing is the quality of the training. We have students come from all around the globe to study with Aviation Australia because of our quality. We deliver top-notch training and make top-notch engineers who operate as safe as they possibly can, which in the aviation environment, it's all about quality. Passionate instructors. Uh, look, I was just looking at, the, at Google before and I was trying to work out the comparison uh, so basically from uh, the, the main archipelago in the uh, Maldives is about 50 kilometres. To come to work every day, I drive 
about three and a quarter times that, about 180 kilometers a day uh, to work and back. I, and I'm not the only instructor here that does that. It's because we love our job and we love what we do. Uh, so from there, the, one of the other things that we offer uh, is the, the journal of experience or a, a log book. So that log book is a, a legal document that you can hand to your regulator uh, so being the uh, Maldive uh, Civil Aviation Authority, you could hand them that as a legal document that says, I can fix these planes, I have done this work. So that's, that's what allows them to give you a license. Okay. Uh, and the last one is that whilst many uh, training organisations deliver uh, EASA courses, not all providers provide an EASA approved course, which allows you to get that critical or the, the important part, which is the certificate of recognition of an approved course. And what that does is it allows you to reduce the time before you get that license, uh, which allows you to, to be the signature. Um, and that generally comes with the pay increase and an increase in responsibility. So. That, that wraps me up. Uh, I'll hand over to uh, Ahmed to um, give of his experiences with uh, Aviation Australia. Uh, so I hand it over to you there, Rohini. Ahmed, you need the mute. The mute is on. Hi, everyone. I'm Ahmed. Uh, just want to ex uh, share my experience in uh, Brisbane, living in Australia, and uh, memories of uh, aviation Australia. And my suggestion for the newcomers or new students who want to join aviation Australia. So let me start with my experience as an international student. Um, Australia is a multicultural uh, country. So the race, the religion, everything was uh, there. There was uh, like you can uh, walk your own own things on there, and then the living com living is very comfortable. And uh, one more thing is there, there was a family of Maldivian living there. So you can join them. They are very kind. And uh, I was experienced as my family over there. So once it comes to Aviation Australia, Aviation Australia is a world recognized EASA MRO. And uh, you can, uh, you can uh, study there. You will get the certificate of EASA and uh, as Maldivian civil aviation approved. And one more thing is there, high quality instructors are there to teach you. And the hangar which we walk on there was uh, wonderful and you will have uh, all the uh, updated The facilities are daily updated. For the newcomers, I would like to tell you that the ESA logbook, which we have, which we will get once you complete Aviation Australia, will help you to get through your set with, uh, licensing. And then one more thing, uh, while you are having the experience like King Air, Beechcraft, King Air, that is pretty much we are using in Maldives. The engines and all the components are pretty much the same as we use in Maldives. So I reckon anybody would like to join Aviation Australia, you will be not regret what you have taken.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Rohini, David, and Ahmed. Uh, that was uh, very informative. Uh, we will uh, post some questions to you after the next presentation. Hida, uh, it's your turn now. Please uh, tell us about Study Australia and your activities uh, as well as the services. Uh, let me just share the screen. I'll stop this. Uh, thank you, Aris. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, for joining today's webinar. I'll be giving you a brief introduction about Study Australia and the services we provide. As Arif has mentioned, Study Australia is the uh, Moldovan branch of Australian Education Agency, Edu Training Australia, which is based in Perth. Um, our main objective is to provide and disseminate information about the opportunities provided in, for international students in Australia, UK, and Malaysia also. We also offer education, counseling, and application management services to those inquiring. Uh, as all our activities are funded by our partner institutes, the services we provide are free of charge. This is uh, one of the advantages of inquiring through us. And talking about the services, here are, at Study Australia, we have QEAC approved qualified education counselors who can assist with the university application, uh, visa management, visa application, provide you with guidance on your career path and help with the cost estimation and budgeting as well. For the university application management, uh, once you have, uh, once you make an inquiry, we will offer courses specifically catered to your needs. This can be specified to a city of your choice um, or even based on the rank of the universities and field of study. So in addition to this, we also assist in travel and accommodation management and student life and employment guidance. As we have agents uh, based both in Maldives and in Australia, this we will be providing personalized face-to-face -face assistance if needed, and this can be really helpful when you are traveling to a new city and if you're going to Australia for the first time. Two of our recently in introduced services in include providing assistance uh, for government and student loan application. Uh, so if you have received government student loan this year, who, who have received the government student loan has already been informed. If you have received it, we will be more than happy to assist you with the next stage in securing a placement and calculating the difference you have to pay in if you want to travel to Australia for your studies. Um, and if you have plans to uh, apply for the BML student loan, we can assist with the documentation and provide assistance in making an informed decision as well. So feel free to reach out to us uh, if you require any of these services. Now talking about the education sectors, here we have categorized education sectors uh, based on the majority inquiries we have received in the past. I'll be giving you a short introduction on each of the six uh, categories mentioned here. First is the university education. Australia is one of the world's most, uh, Australia is one of the country, most popular country for international students. The country is, for the country is known for its top ranked university and quality education. The country has a national set of qualifications that are endorsed by the Australian government. This means that there is a national and international recognition of each qualification. And so Study Australia has partners, uh, partner universities from different cities in Australia. So if you have plans to pursue your graduate or postgraduate studies in Australia, we can assist you with uh, choosing your preferred course and understanding the scholarship opportunities available for you at your selected university or institute as well. And moving on to the second education sector. Um, the pathway programs. If you believe that you don't meet any of the entry requirements to do a university degree and if you have received a low score in your high school certificate or if your IELTS um, if your IELTS test didn't go the way you have planned or if you received a lower score, you can do a pathway program, which can range from foundation to certificate programs uh, and diploma courses as well. There are 
the, there are separate institutes that do provide pathway courses in Australia, and we do have partners uh, partners with these in institutes as well. So you can pursue a pathway course that can give you the direct entry to a second year of a bachelor's degree course from your preferred university. And uh, the technical and vocational education and training TVET courses, these courses provide more practical and work-oriented uh, occupational skills compared to university or higher education. So this can be a way for you to kickstart your career, uh, give it a little boost to reach your next promotion. So focusing on aviation sector, we are happy to be partnered with Aviation Australia and other aviation course providers as well from around Australia. If you have plans to major in the aviation sector, we can assist in finding placement uh, to complete your diploma in aviation focused on maybe flight instructor uh, instrument and uh, getting your commercial pilot license as well. And we can also, in addition to this, you can make arrangements for pre-vocational aeroskill trainings and refresher trainings for cabin crews and pilots too. And the other sector, English language uh, courses, um, I think this was mentioned uh, before as well. And Australia is an ideal place to learn English. There are different types of English courses you can pursue if you plan to do a short-term English course or a long-term one prior to your studies, we can assist you with it as well. You are allowed to do a course with a duration of less than three months uh, on tourist visa, which can be an amazing experience taking into consideration that you will be surrounded by people who speak uh, in English language. And uh, the primary and secondary education. This is one of the most inquired uh, sector by students and parents in Maldives. Australia provides one of the best education opportunities for children uh, with its diverse population. They have private and public schools available for international students. Uh, if you have plans to study a postgraduate course, uh, your children can be enrolled free of charge. Also, if you are living outside of Australia and you are interested in choosing a different schooling uh, for your child, we can assist uh, you to getting them enrolled in one of the uh, pri secondary primary school of Australia. Along with the student and student's enrollment, one parent can get a guardian visa to travel and study in, stay in Australia for the duration of your child's education, which can be very beneficial taken into consideration. Parents can work uh, in Australia uh, while they're there. And there are several families who move just to have uh, provide education for their children. And um, when compared to Singapore and Malaysia, it is much more cost effective when it comes to primary and secondary education. And then there are the upskilling courses. Uh, this is if you are interested in taking a short break from work or doing upskilling course, even if it is part of your organization's requirement or part of your personal growth, this can be the right choice for you. So the upskilling courses provided uh, by Australia's, uh, Australia is uh, short and can be an investment to your personal development under the guidance of experts, uh, trainers, and industry professionals. These courses uh, can also boost um, uh, your career and can be how you discover your passion maybe and can give you a promotion or you can take different courses and take different topic areas for a test drive and see if this is what you are meant to do, something like that. And then uh, there are the study tours and exchange programs. These are short and tailored courses uh, and short tailored courses and training programs for small groups. They are, this can be arranged by your company or to a group of individuals with similar interest to discover the working culture and uh, familiarize yourself with new practices, methods that can later be incorporated in what you do. Uh, we do arrange these kind of study to our exchange programs, maybe for a group of teachers or industry professionals, maybe a group from the resort as well. Resorts as well have inquired to go on uh, study tours um, to Australia. So this can be arranged uh, through us. And uh, now the most important slide benefits of studying in Australia. 
Australia provides numerous opportunities for international students. Uh, and in the country is culturally diverse, making it easy for anyone from any background to move and fit in. Uh, high quality education, they, uh, Australia provides high quality education, which uh, I highlighted before. And the number one reason for choosing Australia, uh, this can be one of the best reason. In addition to this, what I covered in education sectors, um, you can uh, work, uh, while you're studying as well, then there is the advantage of not being available in many other countries. This, the, if you go to UK or maybe Singapore, or Malaysia, the opportunities to work is very scarce. It's not really available for you, though there are few students who do work while they study. Uh, this is not only a cost effective way, but a great learning experience for students, especially younger students embarking on a bachelor's degree right after they finish high school. This work experience can benefit um, for their career. Also, though I have mentioned this before, if you are studying a postgraduate course uh, in a master or PhD, your student, your children can be enrolled into one of the public schools in Australia free of charge. And uh, the last point is I want to highlight is about the graduate visa. Uh, this is a very attractive offer for many international students as work experience outside from their home. Um, this country is considered a, a huge plus point. If you undergo a course with a duration of two or more years, you can be entitled for a graduate visa for three years. Uh, during this three year period, you can work and seek permanent employment as well. And moving from benefit, let me conclude uh, by te telling you why you should contact Study Australia to assist you with your next education opportunity. We have, we have qualified agents, as I mentioned before, and with extensive knowledge and up-to-date information. And our services um, are free of charge, as our partner universities fund all the activities. In addition to this, we have agents at both ends. So, in the case you require assistance while you are in Australia, our agents will be available to assist you there too. So yeah, that's all from me. If you have any queries about anything mentioned throughout the presentation, uh, feel free to ask today during the Q&A session or else give us a call at the numbers mentioned in the slide or send us an email. Thank you. I, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you very much, Ida. Uh, we have come to the Q&A part uh, of the webinar. We've got a few questions. Uh, most of them are, are related to the Institute Aviation Australia. Uh, the first question is from Aishat. Uh, what are the chances for a business stream student to join aircraft maintenance course? Rohini and David? Yeah, I might uh, take that um, question. Thanks, Arif. So um, definitely uh, business students can certainly apply for this course. And I'm very encouraged to hear that they are interested uh, in the course. This is a very rewarding course. As I mentioned, the entry requirements are the high school certificate. So if you have done any further study after high school, that will be looked at and reviewed as well as part of the entry requirements. So as long as you've passed maths at that grade 12 level, you will be accepted into this course and you have your English levels equivalent to the IELTS 5.5. So we certainly welcome interest from um, any business uh, students I think this is a uh, quite a technical course that would be quite different, but enjoyable uh, to those students. So that means uh, whatever physics or maths uh, requirement uh, will be covered in the course, right? Yes. So as David said, uh, we do do a math subject and we also have a physics subject. So physics is not a requirement but it would be of benefit if the student had had some prior learning in physics. So has completed a subject in physics before, that would be of benefit, but it's not a mandatory requirement. Only maths is. 
Okay, thank you. That's very clear. Uh, the next question is from Hasib. He says that he has completed all his modules and whether he can apply for a job there. I mean, uh, it must be in, uh, he must be referring to Australia. I might take that one as well. Um, so because we are a training institute as our primary focus, uh, we can't really comment on the availability of jobs um, uh, for non-Australian citizens. Um, uh, there are plenty of opportunities, uh, both here in Australia and overseas uh, within the aviation sector. Uh, so I definitely encourage the student to um, send their applications to as many um, uh, um, recruitment um, agencies as possible. Um, I, I can uh, mention uh, here in Australia, there is a uh, recruitment site called speak.com. And I would encourage anyone looking for a job to maybe visit that website seek.com. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer, a question from Jennifer. Do you have other courses aside from aircraft maintenance? So Aviation Australia does offer um, cabin, a short cabin crew course, um, as well as some um, advanced uh, uh, pilot courses. Um, so you would have needed to acquire your pilot license first before you come and do those courses with us. Um, uh, traditionally, the aircraft ma maintenance engineering um, diploma has been the most popular with the international students because that is the course that we have the EASA, the European Recognition for, and that gives uh, the global career mobility to these students. So, you know, you can go and work back home in the Maldives or anywhere in the world after receiving, uh, achieving that diploma and that EASA outcome. Thank you. Uh, a question from Analfa. Uh, she wants to know whether uh, she could do the B2, B2 course right away after completing the B1 course. And uh, what's the duration of the B2 course? So we do have a B2 extension course. That course generally runs for around four and a half months. Okay. But the requirement for that course is that you have successfully completed the B1 and have the approved course certificate of recognition. So getting exam credits for B1 um, won't allow you to enter into the B2 extension course. You need that full approved course certificate of recognition, COR. So in terms of when do we run that B2 course, it's generally run on demand. So if we students interested and in having completed the B1 course successfully, we will then run that B2 extension course. And what the student achieves after, after completing both the B1 and the B2 course is two diplomas and two certificates of recognition for the approved course, the EASA approved course. So they get the B1 certificate of recognition and the B2 certificate of recognition. Thank you. Uh, for someone holding a diploma in aircraft maintenance engineering, uh, what are the pathways for further education? Great question. So Aviation Australia does have some university articulation agreements. And what that means is that Universities such as uh, Griffith um, or at the um, Southern Cross University have recognised Aviation Australia's Diploma of Aircraft Maintenance Engineering, and you will receive credits towards completing the degree. So if the degree was three years, 
you might receive credits for one year of that degree. And so you only need to complete two years. In some cases with some universities, you might receive one and a half years credit and only have to complete the other one and a half year. It depends on what university you go to and what course you want to progress onto. So whether that's aviation management or a bachelor of engineering, it will depend on the specific course and university. But we can speak individually to any student that is interested in progressing on after that. Thank you. Uh, during the COVID situation, uh, how are you managing the courses and the studies? Fantastic. So we've started an intake uh, now um, last week with a lot of international students from all over the world. And these students are logging in online or there's some students that had already made it into Australia uh, previous to the COVID crisis and have been able to extend their student visa and stay on in Australia to complete this course. So some students are completing it in the classroom while others are completing it online, but by an instructor. So it is led by an instructor. It is not a self-paced online course. The instructor guides the student through all the subjects um, as if the student was actually in class. Thank you. Uh, the other question is uh, regarding accommodation. Uh, what are the types of uh, student accommodation available near the campus? Yep. So we, in Australia, um, and then in particular here in Brisbane, we have a whole range of student accommodation. So we have um, homestay um, where you could stay with an Australian family and experience the real Australian family lifestyle or you could stay in purpose-built student accommodation. And there's a whole range of providers uh, based either in the city or throughout Brisbane with direct bus routes here to the campus. Um, or you could choose to rent out an apartment and stay um, with some other friends or other um, locals um, in an apartment or a residential property in Brisbane. But Ahmed could probably provide you with his real life situation um, on where he stayed um, when he studied here at Aviation Australia. Yeah, I was in uh, Escort, just uh, nearest suburb of uh, Eagle Farm, where the Brisbane airport was located. So there was a direct bus towards the school. So it's very easy, very convenient to go there. How long did the bus take? For me, it is uh, 19 minutes. Okay, just, just a short drive. Yep. Uh, we have another question. Uh, how does the overseas student health cover work? Um, so the students are covered and must be covered through um, to be able to get their visa. Um, so they take on um, their own um, uh, coverage um, and we have a student support services team here at Aviation Australia that works with each of the individual students to take on the appropriate cover, whether it's an individual cover or a family cover. And then if there is any uh, medical issues here, the uh, student support services officers can assist students in making appointments um, with doctors or dentists or any specialists that they need. Our student support services team um, are very helpful in providing some information, advice, guidance on accommodation um, issues or questions on health cover, um, on social activities, or maybe even some volunteer activities here in Australia, if, if that's what the students are interested in. Uh, the student services team also runs many cultural events 
um, throughout the year and encourages all of our international students to share their cultures with um, the other students as well as domestic students. Uh, so it's always learning about um, uh, all the exciting countries, uh, cuisines and um, the different um, uh, cultural um, um, activities that happen um, overseas and that we share here when they arrive on campus. Uh, you've come to the, uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, we've come to the last question. Uh, it's regarding uh, entry requirements. Uh, it says, I'm really interested to pursue this career. I have been in the aviation field in the aviation field as a ground staff for more than eight years. What I'm missing is year 12 A-levels, year 12 uh, slash A-levels, A-level maths. Uh, is there any pathway or additional course to pursue this career? Also, is there an age limit? Definitely no age limit. And um, I definitely welcome um, mature age students um, as well. We have a whole range of um, students here from um, students that have just finished high school to students exactly like um, uh, the um, question that's come through where they have decided uh, to change the career that they've been working in um, and want to explore something new or um, extend themselves within the industry that they are working in, like aviation. So um, definitely welcome them. Um, this particular case sounds um, very interesting. And I think um, if they can contact uh, either myself, David, or my colleague, Simona, who's also here online, um, at the international.aviationaustralia.aero address. Um, that would be really beneficial and we can really just have a look at this particular case and, um, and work through it. Or if they even um, contact um, yourselves at um, Edu Training um, Australia and we could all have a um, meeting with this um, particular um, person and work through their case. I'm sure Nida will also follow up on this. Uh, so we've, uh, thank you, thank you everyone. Uh, we have come to the uh, end of the webinar. Uh, thank you especially uh, our panelists, Rohini, David, and Ahmed uh, for taking time to participate and uh, contribute uh, in the session. A recorded wo version of this webinar will be available on Facebook. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in our future webinars. Uh, good luck and be safe. Thank you.